In the early morning hours of March 4, 2022, Russian forces invading Ukraine initiated what is now considered the world's first military attack on a nuclear power plant. During the fighting, a shell hit the plant's first production unit, which was under maintenance at the time. A fire broke out. By Friday morning, the fighting at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest, had stopped. Fires were apparently under control, there were no radiation leaks, and no fatalities. The event, however, created a flurry of news stories and social media posts that were laden with fear that surpassed even the concerns over an occupied Chernobyl, which fell to Russian forces only a few days before. One viral tweet from Dmitry Kuleba, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, claimed that this could have quickly led to a disaster ten times worse than Chernobyl. But could it? Are Ukraine's nuclear power plants, and nuclear power plants in general, just one errant bullet or missile away from a corium-dripping catastrophe? How dangerous is a nuclear power plant under siege? This video is purely for educational purposes. There is no political point to make in its content, nor are there any insights on the ongoing conflict. I am not a nuclear expert. My only goal is to educate you on the designs and safeguards in nuclear power plants, as this will inform your acceptance of nuclear power generally, which I believe we need. I also see a great need to put accurate information about nuclear power into the information ecosystem. I am pulling from my time at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, my own training as a civil engineer, and from personal conversations with experts who have actually worked in power plants that have melted down. Given that the invasion of Ukraine is tragic, chaotic, and evolving, the accuracy of this video could change at any moment. If it does, I will change, add to, or delete this video. Shelling a nuclear power plant is, without question, a bad idea. Attacking any complex, multi-billion dollar facility that a country relies on is a bad idea. But it seems that the public believes nuclear power plants are inherently different, more dangerous, that they are some fuse just waiting to be lit, a vat of gasoline awaiting a match. They are not. The first thing to understand about nuclear power plants is that they are extremely resilient. Not because nuclear power is always dangerous, but because to safely make power from nuclear reactions in the first place, you need a shocking amount of concrete and steel. This is how any nuclear reactor works. Fuel rods are placed in a particular orientation such that the radioactivity coming out of them continues the nuclear chain reactions in other rods nearby. This chain reaction is kept under control by water, neutron absorbing control rods, and other protocols like the addition and subtraction of the fuel rods and control rods themselves. The end goal of all this nuclear geometry is to use the heat generated by the nuclear reactions to turn water into steam, and use that steam to turn turbines for electricity. Simple in theory, difficult to execute in practice, and it's this difficulty that in turn makes nuclear power plants extraordinarily resilient and difficult to turn into disasters. It is the nature of high energy particles to pass through stuff. They are small, moving incredibly fast, and can sometimes ignore fields and forces. The degree to which a particle passes through stuff depends on what kind of particle it is. Alpha radiation, a charged helium nucleus, is relatively big and interacts with electric fields. It's the most easily stopped. Beta radiation, or high-speed electrons and or positrons, still interact electrically but are much smaller and so they pass further. Gamma radiation is high-energy photons moving at the speed of light and it can pass through even a large amount of lead. Finally, neutron radiation, fast-moving and electrically neutral, passes through just about everything except for a lot of concrete. Seeing as the goal of every nuclear reactor is to generate a lot of neutrons to kick off and sustain nuclear reactions for heat, you'd expect these devices to have a lot of concrete shielding, and they do, an astonishing amount. A modern nuclear reactor isn't a creaky old powder keg always on the edge of combustion. No, it's a monolith of lead-infused concrete, rebar, and steel multiple levels of shielding and protection, hundreds of feet tall, many feet thick, reinforced everything, redundant everywhere. This 
is what a practically indestructible thing really looks like. Reactors, again by their very nature, are designed to withstand tornadoes, missiles, and plane crashes at nearly supersonic speeds. Even the casks we store and transport nuclear waste in are engineered like this. You can crash a runaway train into one, and literally nothing happens. It is not an exaggeration to say that attacking a nuclear reactor with anything less than directed, substantial, and specialized ordnance will not significantly damage a nuclear reactor. And even if it did, reactors today can shut themselves down even if they feel the vibrations from a nearby explosion before they even endure one. And at ZNPP, efficient shutdowns of reactors happened. According to Rafael Mariano Grossi, Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, before the attack, the plant's first reactor was already shut down for maintenance. The second and third reactors were shut down immediately during Russian assault, and the reactors four through six remained in low power mode. The integrity of the reactors were not compromised. The reactors, quote, are being protected by robust containment structures, U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm said in a statement. This is all entirely unsurprising once you actually understand how these facilities are designed and how they operate. It is very unlikely that any unintentional and underpowered military attack would break a nuclear reactor. If it did, even then, the reactor stops and cools down. But here is the actual worry. The ZNPP facility has six reactors and a total capacity of 5.7 gigawatts, enough to power more than 4 million homes. If all those reactors had to shut down for absolute safety, that's a lot of uranium that still has to cool all the way down. There is a sequence of events here where by accident or by design, Russian invasion forces damage, disable, or otherwise destroy infrastructure that is used to cool down fuel, the backup diesel generators on site, for example. However, as someone like Lake Barrett, a former US NRC official who worked on the cleanup of the Three Mile Island plant points out, quote, multiple backup cooling systems are available and operators have been trained to be able to withstand plausible situations that could occur under any abnormal situation. If there is no significant military damage to their multiple redundant safety systems, the reactor should remain in a safe, stable state. Again, this is all unsurprising and even reassuring when you know how a nuclear power plant actually works. If the worst did happen, if a series of events led to a damaged reactor core and a loss of cooling, reactor cores would heat up to the point of melting. A meltdown is just this, nuclear material heating itself up until its material structure changes phase. But unlike what followed the meltdown of Chernobyl's reactor unit 4, the six reactors at Zaporizhia are pressurized water reactors that have containment structures that Chernobyl did not have, designed to stop the release of radiation into the environment. And also unlike the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, which melted down from a loss of cooling capabilities, Europe's largest nuclear reactors have separated water and steam circuits, making the loss of cooling water less likely. And they have emergency core cooling systems and multiple injection systems to prevent meltdown. And even then, in the worst case of worst cases, if all of these things fail, a meltdown would likely still be entirely contained by a containment structure literally hundreds of feet tall and many feet thick. Thankfully, there have been no fatalities as Zaporizhia. The fires from the fighting were contained almost immediately. There was no damage to any reactors, and though the plant itself is under Russian occupation, Ukrainian staff are still running the operations. The same situation as Chernobyl under siege. Despite what goes viral, it is physically impossible for ZNPP to become, quote, 10 times Chernobyl, based on the design of the plant itself and the details that we know right now. I am phrasing this all so strongly because I know a situation like the siege of ZNPP is going to stick in your mind. I know it will be used by the opponents of nuclear power generally. But this was a test case of the world's first military attack on a nuclear power plant, and the plant passed. Easily. 
Nuclear reactors the world over are not inherently unstable structures just waiting to cause a catastrophe. No, they are intensely engineered and nearly indestructible feats of science that have been miscategorized by the failings of Chernobyl and Fukushima, both of which were consequences of hubris and human error. Not a small fire. It remains to be seen what will become of Ukraine's nuclear reactors after the invasion. Russian aims aren't as mysterious here. Controlling the source of half a country's power is militarily advantageous, but blowing it up is not. One can only hope that Ukraine's nuclear power plants will stay as safe as they were built to be. Tu nastupenu grazu.